This is the cider press. I have an apple tree on my property. Decided to take advantage of it. If you can't tell, this is homemade. The frame is pretty simple, just two by four construction. This joint is for strength, it's glued and screwed. This one's just screwed, it's really just holding the piston in position as it goes up and down. And up here at the top, again for strength, these joints are glued and screwed. On the underside, the piston rides up against a steel angle bracket so that the piston won't deform the wood. And the hydraulic press pushes down on the piston. And you can see I got a couple of round discs. This one is holding the 2x4 and it's attached to the actual piston that presses the apples. Here's the bucket. We collect the cider in the tray. And inside the bucket is an old cotton t-shirt that I use as a filter. And that fits well in the bucket. So this will be the piston. I also had this circle of wood that I used a jigsaw to cut out. And then the actual plunger is just going to be this 2x4 that's going to sit down in here like so. And this is basically going to be a, mostly a gluing surface. So that will very well attach this to this and then I'll be able to attach this disc to the main plunger. So this is the bucket. Been a little bit of an evolution. It's just a food grade two gallon plastic bucket. Picked it up at a local beer and wine brewing company. It was a fair amount of money for a plastic bucket but not a large expenditure. To help limit the uh, bulging when it's under pressure, I simply put a couple of hose clamps on the bottom. And that seems to work pretty well. And for the filter, I just used this cotton t-shirt. It actually started out as white. Now it's a healthy golden brown. This is five gallons of apples from my tree. And here are the apples in my slop sink being washed. And here are some of the apples. Uh, this year we got quite a few that actually have a fair amount of red on them. Historically they're almost entirely yellow. And this is a typical one. Uh, from what I understand, you know, in the days of Johnny Appleseed, apples were about this big. Here it is near a ruler for reference, which is why in the old days kids used to bob for apples around Halloween. And obviously you can get your mouth on something like that if you're a kid. And then in contrast, this is an apple we just got from Costco recently. Very large, but not very large on flavor. And this is a locally grown apple that we recently picked up just uh, for a size comparison. So, can you spot the home homegrown apples in this picture? I use a food processor to chop the apples into a mash. I dump the mash into our stock pot and repeat this about 600 times. I cut every apple open because you never know what you're going to find. You know, every now and then you get an apple that doesn't look so bad and you cut it open and it's pretty rotten to the core. So here is the apple pulp and here is the bucket. Put it in about yay much. Put in maybe four inches or so, ten centimeters, and it usually compresses down to about half that size. Carefully fold over the t shirt like so. Well, and here's the finished product. I don't know how much it is. It looks to be about a gallon or so. I typically get a quart out of a gallon or so of apples. And I started with five gallons of apples, so that seems about right. 
Right now I'm slowly heating it up to 140 degrees. That's thought to be a food safe temperature. If there's any little microbes or pathogens in here, uh, they should be killed at 140 degrees. And that's it. Let it cool down and it's ready for consumption. I don't know if you can get an idea for just how thick this is, but it's very thick. Almost as viscous as a uh, real maple syrup. And it's also very sweet. There's very little tartness in the apples that I use. So uh, it's almost as sweet as maple syrup too. Of course a completely different flavor. I will cut it with water or uh, sometimes mix it with other juices since this stuff is a little too sweet for my palate. And I freeze some of it for later consumption. And that's my story and I'm sticking with it. So this guy was a little bit different but I hope you got something out of this video. If you did let me know, like, subscribe, leave a comment, and as always, keep your eyes out for the next one.